I'm glad we're meeting today just to jump right into it because yeah. Uh, recently I've been thinking I've had kind of a shift in perspective as far as if money weren't in mm. it, you preach, you we're strictly thinking about what you actually want to do and what brings you joy. And if, if that was it, like really thinking and really digging down deep for myself about like, what do I want to do? What's the thing that I love doing more than anything? If I weren't thinking about career or trajectory or like my status or any of that bullshit. And if I'm being completely honest and truthful with myself, it's the thing I love doing the most. Sex. Camp, 100%. Second, yeah. the thing I like doing second. Uh, sorry, I just saw this as a family podcast now. Yeah, right, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, continue. Um, bro, shooting with the camcorder and going in, doing the found footage horror shorts, that's my favorite fucking thing to do in the world. Mm. Because I can do the properly like set up thing. And obviously, bro, if I got a feature opportunity, like I would jump right on that, right? So I'm not gonna like change anything if an opportunity presents itself. But if I'm thinking of like where I'm spending my energy, where I'm putting my time, uh, part of this too was I just edited like five shorts that were the properly set up ones, which takes such a long time, bro. Red dress, the one we did together being one of them. So the first cut's done for that one, which I'm stoked about. It looks really good, dude. Oh, but, um, but dude, it's a whole process. And then you get in like mix, like I have the best composer in the world. So I love working with them and I don't want that to change. But when I'm able to, it's like a completely different process. It's completely self-efficient. I can just call up someone, go to their house, get like one person to play the creature and then we just knock it out and then I can upload it like in a couple of days and that. And so it made me think about, um, do you know what you really want out of your creative prowess? And you're saying that the process of making these films that you've done so many times, it, right. there's actually something to that, that you don't want to lose. That's like, that is a very fulfilling activity for you. hundred percent dude. And it got me thinking, you know, Casey Neistat is the YouTube. Casey Affleck? No, dude. All Casey's are the same. He was yeah. a, he uh, is like the most popular YouTuber from like 2015. And he did something called daily vlogs where it was like revolutionary. Yeah. No one had ever really like focused on just doing vlogs before. And so his story is really interesting because he started that at like 35 and before then, he was chasing the traditional, like, Hollywood thing of, like, like, he had a movie that was on HBO, and he was, like, a director, but there was still something that wasn't, like, creatively fulfilling for him. And so he was at, like, 500,000 subscribers at that point. Like, he'd make, you know, a couple of his videos got, like, 16, 17 million hits, but the subscriber count was just completely stagnant. And then he started daily uploads. He started doing daily vlogs, which had never been done before. And within the first five months of doing that, he gained another 500K subs. And then after that, like the next, the rest of the year, rounding out that first year, he gained like an additional 2 million subs. And his methodology for the whole thing was if this isn't Hollywood, if you want to make it online, like on YouTube or whatever, you got to show up for work every day. And so it got me thinking. May if, I ask? I'm sorry. Side oh, note. Were his vlogs intriguing more than just that it's a vlog daily of someone or anyone? But was it a little bit like this inside into the Hollywood lifestyle of someone that's kind of successful? Yeah, his and you should check him out, too, dude. I feel like you'd really love his stuff. A lot of it is like him talking about, you know, his routine and like his thoughts on stuff. But, but like, why is his not, routine and thoughts noteworthy? Like, is he, was he somewhat of a big person? It's mostly point? about the way that he shoots stuff. Like the way that he shot the vlogs were, was incredibly engaging. Yeah. To where, and, and he, it, and the reason for it is because he had like this background, whatever, he'd made movies before. But the way he thought about these daily vlogs was that he was making a movie every day, like a small film every day. What's and his so, name again? Casey. 
not Affleck. Mm-hmm. Neistat, N E I S T A T. I'm sure most of our listeners yeah, yeah. know who he is. Our three listeners. By the way, my buddy TJ just pointed out today that he's a big fan. I, I don't know how it came up, but he texted me. He's like, dude, when are you guys doing it this week? I love listening to it on my morning Jake. drive on like Thursday mornings. Dude, Tour. that's dope. He's like, it's informative and fun to listen Bro, to. I love that even more than the YouTube thing, like people checking out on YouTube. Like I love when people are just in their cars and they're like, yo, it's like on Apple, whatever. Spotify. Yeah. yeah maybe they listen to YouTube's on it too. And I have to agree. I think it's fun and kind of easy going to listen to yeah, as well. 100%. If, I, if I may boast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I bro, like that, I mean, it just got me thinking as far as like, if I if I like pull myself out of that whole thing of like, you know, you come here to LA to Hollywood, you want to make it, you want to make like feature films and it's all about like putting out features and they're getting wide release. I feel like all that stuff can still happen, but this is a crazy fucking idea, dude. And I don't even know if it's sustainable. I know if I were to fully wrap my mind around it, I could execute, but the idea is hit us with it. The first, I mean, I know this for a fact because Ken, you know, Ken, um, yeah, he's my producing partner. We're both planning on when he gets off his show, we're going to hunker down together so that we have a daily release every day during October. And so that was the initial idea. Um, it's going to happen and that's already in place, but, and I'm just talking this out now and I don't even know if this is what I'm going to do. But like, just conceptualize, if I were to put out a camcorder found footage horror short that was of the same level of quality that I'm releasing weekly every single day for like a year, just imagine what that could do. It's like the 10,000 hours thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's the 10,000 hours thing. But, and I, you know, dude, it's like a crazy, I don't even know if it's sustainable, if it's possible. But it's like just comparing to that example of the Casey Neistat stuff. If I don't really love writing screenplays, if I don't really love, if I don't, you know, if I don't have the money yet at this point in time to be making features, it's like, how am I spending my time? And am I doing something that I actually enjoy doing? So something I'll have to think about, but I wanted to bring that up because I think it's interesting to like take yourself out of the whole hustle for a second and be like, Am I really, I really want to do. actually doing what I want to do? Yeah. Exactly. And that, that kind of informs the hustle even more and what it's going towards might inspire you to stay stronger in that. Um, yeah. Which speaking on the, on the same note, but on, on my side uh, this week, with, as far as things that I commit to on the podcast, as far as accountability, our short film, Laura, um, that I'm supposed to be writing. Right naturally uh i haven't gotten to it yeah this week i've had a crazy week but i have like written down bullet points in my notes section and it's actually the idea of it is so exciting you and i spoke about it last week about Mm -hmm. this biopic short film could be turned into a feature the hope is to do it into a feature of two you know social media sensations that seemingly on the surface are having so much fun and then behind the scenes there's a horror story going on 100 percent. and dude i was even like marinating on it this week yeah and we, we've come we've come up with a lot of stuff as well but wait go on yeah yeah and i feel like for this to be for this to really take off the core concept is really good um a lot of this what i'm about to say has to do with like what i'll do as a director but i think you can come into the right as well yeah but I think visually it has to be really shocking as far as like the lengths that you were willing to go through. Well, Hey, first, if no one, if our current listeners haven't heard the last episode, you want to break down this idea real quick to just set it up. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that was kind of already the broad strokes really just that you see on the surface, this hunky dory couple, that's everyone's favorite couple on TikTok, what have you. And then behind the scenes, you know, she's, she or he is holding the other one ransom in yeah. a way that, you know, the audience can never expect. And then I came up uh, already with something that like, maybe there's this comment that one person comments on something exposing their whole web of lies. 
and then they have to confront it and like you know this whole horror thing unravels i came up with my dad that maybe their background is a certain background and maybe he's even handicapped he's done something and and it happened in a big incident maybe they had a third partner in the past in their in their act maybe it was a magic act Colin K- and that's and I'm not definitely not married to that. That's yeah. I don't know about the magic act part of it, but uh-huh. what you said about like the handicap thing, and there could maybe have been a third person. That angle is really interesting because it, it makes the world bigger than you just being yeah. this guy. This yeah. quick thing, and maybe they joke around about you know they have like a great uh, temperance about the whole thing, and they have a comic duo, and but maybe there was a third partner in their act, and something happened to them, and everyone kind of forgot about it. But maybe he had something to do with it. And his yeah. girlfriend kind of is the only one that knows about that and hangs it over him. You can go down that hole. Out. You know, it's a formula, but we can do it in kind of a clever way, I think. 100%. And I'm it's pitching now, but like, yeah, yeah. Uh, what I like, like, dude, the whole thing about hype houses and like that whole dynamic is really interesting. You know, I, I don't know about hype houses. It could involve more people. Obviously, it gets it gets more and more challenging the more people you bring in. What is what are hype houses? Literally, hype houses are like how deep into TikTok are you? Mm-hmm. Kind of none. I haven't looked at it. In- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm really not either. The only reason I heard about it was um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not at all, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm being not TikTok up right bro. now, dude. It's funny because you and I, I think, are just like on the cusp of like millennial Gen Zers, we're both of us are like literally right on the cusp. But um, technologically, I'm very old fashioned randomly, but I, I, I'm always trying to get better. But anyway, continue. But yeah, hype houses are a group of like either up and coming or they've already been established TikTok stars. They have millions of followers and they all live together in a mansion. And there are a few here in LA, like about 10. And they all collaborate with each other because that just pulls in a shit ton of views. If you got like this person with 5 million subs, this person with like 10, then they just do like dances and all that shit with each other. And uh, it's just like way more convenient way of pulling in views. And there's all this whole dynamic that can get kind of toxic, uh, especially when people Imagine. are being as interested in like being yep. involved and in all this Fair stuff. Enough. But yeah, dude, I think especially because you're diving yep. into this, um, it might be interesting to check out. Like there's, uh, I think on Netflix, there's this doc about it. Oh my gosh. I also are, I'm going to write that down. I already looked up biggest scandals on TikTok. Um, hype houses. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I found stuff about like this duo that did something as a prank, like pretended to rob a bank and then it got taken too far and they ended up getting arrested and stuff. But I think it's a it's a topical subject. There's this movie coming out with Zoe Douche that uh, is about her like staging something to get views on social media, but it was fake. And then the movie comes out on her. What's that? Her name's Zoe Douche. <laughs> I think that's how you say her last name. That'd be pretty okay. hilarious if I said it incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, she's like she's a big actress. Yeah, she's like our age. And I then, um, her name, yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, she's huge. Um, and uh, she's almost like a Selena Gomez type. And then, um, so basically, you're living on a rock. But <laughs> yeah, says the guy who's not on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, it takes one to know one. About hype one. houses. Yeah. Anyway, I obviously didn't have much of a point there. <laughs> it's a movie about social media. Um, Laura and I are going to try to get together this week. We tried last week. And it was lame. And then we FaceTimed for like 10 seconds. And even that 10 seconds was like very productive. Yet I had to go. My car also broke down this week, too. It was a crazy week. Damn, dude. Yeah. Uh, I think also me just like thinking about it this week is like, Bro, the more of these that I do, like I, I, I'm learning more like what keeps people engaged. And as long as we can avoid a situation of where it's like, um, like I think location is important. Like it's not just like you two like at a, on a white wall and we're just kind of seeing like iPhone footage. Like visually, I want to capture something that's like really engaging. What, you know, setting wise, especially, you know, 
it could be interesting to kind of play with like maybe it's not just in a house or maybe there's another part of it that's like fucked up with like a cage that you keep her in or some shit you know i like that you're thinking like that because that's crossed my mind a ton and looking at your stuff even like the fisherman really good production value like i like yeah yeah i like that everything looks really nice but um it's like the more of these that i do and i realize like like the slog of bringing in like bro i fucking love all the dps that i bring in but it's like having them lug all of that equipment and bring in all that shit and make it a whole thing when it's not a camcorder type situation it's like let's make it look really good and the and what i found is to make something crisp as fuck which is the same i mentioned this when i was talking about like the camera angles of red dress remember like the angles that aren't on the white wall are better because it looks like very aesthetically pleasing, you know? And I love that you're thinking that uh, way. Yeah. That's everything, dude. It, it's so important. You you have to be inspired visually. And mm -hmm. all, oftentimes that doesn't come just from being a Wes Anderson wannabe. It comes from having a rich story, an inspired story. And yeah, something like the red dress that's not very long, and you know there's not many lines or anything it's so conceptual there's a lot up for interpretation but like with something like a narrative like an intense narrative you know that has a lot of characters and stuff i think that's more opportunity to be like okay well where would this character live and huh. what would these tiktoks be like like we of course have to get so specific on every little thing but i, I don't think we would make a dull visual yeah, I don't think so either, bro. Especially yeah. the way that your mind's going as far as like, maybe like you have a handicap or maybe this has been done before. Like I'm already starting to think about, it kind of reminds me of like, uh, I don't know if this is where you're going, but it kind of reminds me of like um, human centipede type shit, you know? I can see that too. Yeah. Like body horror kind of fucked up. You're so right. Like a saw thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ooh, baby um what else is going on my man so that's awesome you're editing all the shorts that was my biggest thing this week i'm glad to be kind of out of that slog i still got uh one to edit which we've been sitting on this footage now for this last one for like a year and a half it's called silent night and it's uh christmas themed so if and bro the crazy thing is like i just naturally assumed because i shot it so long ago that it'd kind of be shit but bro, it's like some of the best footage. Wow. Like, this is epic, bro. And we've been just sitting on it for like a year and a half. So I'm excited about it. First of all, there's not enough Christmas themed horror movies. Yeah, I agree. I love that. Nightmare yeah, Before Christmas. Best crossover. Like, oh yeah, dude. It's I, I that's underrated. The one we were about to set up was Christmas themed. Oh, don't remind me. I know. Such a lost 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 crazy. soul. Yeah. What um what was I going to say? Oh, I don't know. Dang it. Something about the Christmas film. What's it about? Whatever. It's all good. It'll come to me. All right. I see you got the ring light in the corner. <laughs> That's creeped out a few people. I will tell you. <laughs> in my bedroom. <laughs> Is that where you do this? So you got that little like um, foliage in the background. Makes it look nice it almost yeah i can <laughs> see what you're saying where, where, where you're thinking of that but is that no, a fake not even tree? what is that a fake tree oh yeah very much so nice um yeah no i just i don't know my roommates understandably make me keep my, my ring light in my room but i do the self tapes like out in the living room dude i saw the new headshots yes incredible bro really really Thank nice you especially the first one epic especially okay i appreciate it obviously because i posted it to instagram i i had to i had to showcase myself yeah on the main feed which is a little professional or was it a family friend or what that was someone that worked at the rose restaurant with me no shit it was that guy and he is a professional photographer in a way but he won't respond to my texts he still has my <laughs> clothes for value mentality he did a photo shoot and he's so busy but also just he ended up being a little bit of a 
frustrated artist. So when did he take the photos? A while ago? So long ago. By the way, he had <laughs> he edited the ones that he thought were good. And I was, from the very beginning, I was like, dude, please, for the love of everything good, just, just like, let me download the five that I like. They're like slightly different than the ones that you want. And, and he never did it. He never edited them. So I had to like crop myself, get the like lesser quality ones because he won't respond to me. And I, I, he actually took a hundred dollars from me too. It's like, really, I've been trying to figure out what to do about it. And Harrison, who does value mentality with me is like, dude, he stole our clothing because he, for the photos, he did a sweatshirt, two hats, hasn't given them back. I keep, I've well, been texting him every lot. day. It's a lot, $95 oh. plus yeah. and like $160 worth of stuff. Fuck. Yeah, with that said, um, he did these photos and I finally posted Bro, them. You could, you could send like a form letter from some like, I don't know, do you know, you could, uh, that guy who did like the trademark thing for you, that lawyer, mm-hmm. it's then like a form email saying like, we'll start litigation unless you send the clothes back or some that's shit. That's a really good, that's a really good tip. I straight up, I'm going to ask that guy what to do. <laughs> yeah I, phone call me. I gave him a great review on google yeah dude you paid a good rate like come on oh yeah no oh no the, the photographer thing is ridiculous but not to get too off track thank right. you this is just now we're just airing our grievances People, right they're yeah, like although, no off. that is that is pretty like hollywood hustle right there how to deal with like people that you get into with good intentions that's and, true it's not all sunshine and rainbows people gotta know they come out here to la Everything's peachy, and then it's all gonna be collabs, fun man, collabs, all collabs, bro. Well, then now I could uh, someone end up stealing your clothes and not uh, returning your phone calls. Damn, bro, um, hundred bucks, yeah, right, bro. Yeah, exactly. Um, which I already gave him an additional hundred for the photos. That being said, the yeah, the headshots, obviously, you know, they're they're an artsier vibe, a styly vibe, and yeah, well, like, what was the thing about like laughing maniacally in cats or some shit? I had a sweater vest, right? Or I had a turtleneck and a sweater vest on. It was kind of corny. I looked like a a cyber Mister Rogers, and my cap. And that was the first photo. The next ones were just kind of slick Miami Vice '80s type photos. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the show notes, I know. Get them in the show <laughs> notes. Get them in the show notes. Look, Duke VP on Instagram. My main headshots. There you um, go. And because the first Dude, one, the first one's so good. <laughs> thank you so much. I, it was bizarre. It's a bizarre one, isn't it? But yeah, it, in fact, but it's I, captivating. It's captivating. And I thought, hey, if I can pull this weird look off in like kind of a tasteful way, then that's going to be a good casting for me. And yeah, the caption was here to pet your cats maniacally. Right. Because it looks like a, good on you. A young I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Straight up, I don't know. The, the what? These comments are the best, bro. Are they entertaining? <laughs> They're the best. Someone says, like, where is Tarantino at? And I go, in the valley. In the valley. What? <laughs> I know, it's all an eclectic crew, probably, that responded on it. Yeah, um, yeah my gosh, man. I, I wanted to post this for so long, but I just didn't have the good quality best ones, and they they turn out good though and Bro, you uh, can't I can't tell i mean maybe it's just because it's on instagram i don't know how it looked blown up but you can't tell that they're like lower grade photos no i know totally um i know i gotta put these on my imdb right yeah bro what you waiting for nanny life looks good on you my friend amelia said harrison just commented he's in maine and he goes photos by the same guy who stole all our clothes <laughs> <laughs> dude did you credit the guy no <laughs> yeah he doesn't deserve it at this point that's whack he still works at that so we know his place of work we do but we if i went into that kitchen i think they would kind of like kick me out if you went maybe yeah. i'll go send in my backup yeah I think that might not be a bad idea to actually just hit up this lawyer and see what does he recommend. Dude, that's the thing. You send like a form letter from a lawyer and it's like that scares the shit out of people, especially if it's only a matter of like a few, like obviously it's a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things, 
people wouldn't want to put up with a potential lawsuit for like a couple of sweatshirts, you know? This guy's the kind of guy though that he almost doesn't have anything to lose in some ways. He's really like, you know, he's a line cook. Like he doesn't, he works six days a week. He might just like be like, fuck you and move on. Anyway, that's my thing. I, I'll, it's not that, it's not even a big deal. It's just like, that's just annoying, bro. Yeah. yeah. It's good for people to hear. You're going to run into people like this, but that's why you got to cultivate your tribe. I keep coming back to that. Put in the experience now so that my dad hasn't even gotten there, really. You, so that eventually you have a tribe of people that they make, your, they make you better at what you dad do. Dad hasn't gotten so, there to the point where he has a tribe? Nope. Every, every people, now he's finally able to make, as you and I have talked about, he's able to make work consistently that is his stamp of approval. But still, every time he hires someone new, he doesn't feel that confident he's going to get the best DP, the best director, the best editor. He doesn't feel like he can just throw together something that's so, like, you know, going to be fluid and he's going to yeah. be he would yeah. like to. He'd like to have the time of his life making something. For Duke of the Valley, we kind of did. Mm-hmm. But you know, on a three-day shoot with barely any locations. But, you know, it's... Uh... He is at higher stakes. Like, he's playing a different game. He's playing, like, like he's hiring people, you know? It's, like, a different type situation. Um, I hear all the time... It's crazy that you brought that up, dude, because from a friend of mine, I heard about some you know, stuff that's going on on a set. And it got me thinking to where there's a reason why James Wan has the same crew every time he does a film. He can, yep. and he has a luxury too, because he has the name now. And we're both going to get to that point, right? And your yeah. dad's going to get to that point. Yeah, I think my dad will too, so. percent. But it's like, that is the, o- the only protection that you have against like shit going up in flames on set is if you've worked with these people and i've been through experiences even like on the short end of things where i've had great conversations over the phone over facetime whatever and as soon as you set foot on site it's like you automatically know and i'm like fuck And I'm like, and then I'm just like, okay, I just got to get through the next like eight hours of this shit. And then I just won't work with that person again. And it's so crazy how that happens. And I wish I could just suss it out just by talking to someone, but bro, you don't know unless you, and I would even argue that it's not even working with someone one time. I feel like you really get a sense of a person after like three, maybe even five times of working together in a set environment. And those are my favorite people now. And those are the people in my tribe who I'm going to eventually yeah. help pull them up to that next level. Yeah. And I think, by the way, that's not just filmmaking. That's business in general. Yeah. I was talking to, that's so great that you're getting that experience now and seeing what you want and making those relationships now because um, it's going to be so beneficial. And that's also what you get from doing a large amount of different jobs right because you get to filter out whereas people that maybe even are at the bigger time early on they might not do as many jobs even though they're in a prestigious pool and so they might not get to vet all that that being said i was talking to my boss today that i work for their family and they were saying you know they're hiring someone new they're usually understaffed and when they do so a lot of times they hire someone that they're like probably would work well with but it, they've had a lot of duds so it's like yeah it's tough. hiring is a tough thing bro. working with people is a tough thing it is true unless unless you gel really well that's true bro and but what i would say too is and this is what i mean i've formed this opinion after working with a lot of people like leadership positions whatever throughout my jobs And either if like I've been in the position of leading people on a set or whatever, or if I've been like on the other end and I found that you cannot make someone be excited about a job. You can't make someone have good energy about a job. Maybe you'll get lucky and they already have that and it's cool or whatever. But I feel like the only way as a leader that you can inspire people is by how you operate yourself like if you are genuinely and that's also why you got to do something that you love to like if you're in a job that you just kind of ended up there because you know you like worked at a place for so many years and then you're in that position 
that's one thing, but it's a completely different thing. If you're like, so passionate about this thing, you, you know, you've wanted to do this all your life. And because of that, it's just like, naturally, you're just going to be excited, but in a way that's genuine, because I think people can really smell out if someone's like, I mean, the worst thing in the world is for someone to say, like, uh, we're really excited. It's like the, the general, like, CEO who's like, um, we're really excited this year because we made this X amount of money for the company. And it's like, the employees don't give a shit. Like, especially if they're not getting a cut of how much money, like, that's not going to inspire anyone to work harder. I think it only, I think by being incredibly genuine and just genuinely excited about the job that you're doing, and then naturally that'll just, you know, go off on other people. And I pride myself too on like my sets because I feel like, director's responsibility is setting the tone and yeah. i feel like our sets are always chill but efficient like you get the job yeah. done yep. and everyone is typically unless it like runs really really late but we never do that for the most part um but i feel like people are excited about what they're doing and they're happy to be there and that's mostly because of how i operate you know you're efficient yet chill that's it, bro. That's and it. inspired, you have the vision on everything that I've seen you on. So, yeah, and you do you stuff do, to take that leadership position. I appreciate it, bro. But also, you coming on to set completely shifts the energy of stuff because I feel like when I'm on sets where it's like, it it does take more out of me if I'm gonna have to like, mm-hmm. like I, I feel like force it. sometimes you gotta force it. Yeah, exactly. You do have to force it sometimes. Um, and that's fine, but dude, it's so much easier when you're on set because you genuinely love doing what you're doing and you're like a passionate guy, you know? So it's like you then coming into that and like, I'm already there with that. And that's just like the red dress set was in great time. You know, I think I'm so fortunate. We talked about this before, but it's fun to talk about. I'm at this place that no matter what I'm going to do, obviously it's like a treasure to be able to work with my friends and stuff. You, but also, like, I'm going to step on a set. I don't care what set it is. And I'm going to do my best while also not, like, trying to prove myself to any other person. I'm not going to try to play up to people and be like, oh, my gosh, I need to be this movie star character. Or I need to be this, like, certain actor method type person. I literally, I'm going to try to live my best life. I'm going to get onto a set. I'm going to not change my energy too much. I'm just going to try to make it a good time for everyone else like I would any other place. And yeah. then... And then genuinely, like we've talked about, how do I bring this vision to life in the best possible way? That's it. And a lot of what you're saying also is just being fucking real. Like a lot of people just aren't, they're like manufacturing. They're all wearing masks. People can smell that shit, you know? People don't know how to act. Dude, everyone's running around life a little confused. So it's understandable. But like you said, especially in Hollywood, especially in this creative thing where there's no official map for most it's like you get on set and you've been told all this crap from acting coaches like oh you know you have you have to be the marlon brando or you have to be the misunderstood so everyone i feel like does want to um be looked at as like a past mold or something my biggest thing you know i i try to be so i'm so fortunate that i can yeah in a way try to be real it's like i'm not going to try to fit a password i don't even know that many actors that i modeled myself after of their career of like oh my gosh i'm like that guy i'm the brando i'm the de niro i'm this and that to me it's like no not really i i gotta literally just live my life day by day i have my goal but that's kind of just on paper and on set dude you it's like any other job yeah there's nothing better as an actor than you just being there in the moment like forgetting all that bullshit And it's like, then you enter flow, that shit, which is something that I've only ever experienced like a few times because I was in like acting classes and shit. You forget. I'm sure you've had it a lot. Yeah. 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 But dude, when you can be in that, that fucking flow, that's like heroin, bro. All right. Flows, flow is amazing. But also one thing I wanted to point out as well is all that like set crap of like expectations worrying about your uh reputation and stuff which is understandable it's important but that goes away when you start thinking about okay what is the story we're trying to tell here what how do we how now the real work begins 
I'm not, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying there's an actual job to take care of it. It's like, okay, we're trying to capture this husband who's horrible to his wife. Why is he horrible to his wife? What's happening here? What's going on with the guy across the table? What's their relationship like? You know, get into the story, the psychology of it. And then you start, I don't know, creating. <laughs> it's just like that. You, you're giving me some Jack Nicholson vibes, bro. Um, I, you know, dude, are <laughs> you about to do an impression? Uh, well, uh, you know, yeah. when people tell me I'm Jack, I tell them, I don't know why I'm Jack Nicholson. I don't know. That's I, good, bro. I, I That's great pretty solid. Time. It's pretty solid. Thank you, thank um, you. Dude, it's just like I was talking about last time, uh, that young actress who, like, asked the question to all of these people who've been in, you know, Syracusians who've been in LA. Right. And she was like, how do I feel like an imposter on set? And I'm like, you're literally there to serve the story. Like, why are you thinking about yourself? It's just that shift in perspective. It's like, yeah, that's a trap. That's understandable. But at the end of the day, I keep telling people too, it's, it's a fun self-help thing. Don't worry about how you feel. Don't worry. I think the opposite of most actors' advice is like, don't worry about how you feel. Tell the story. Get the get the bare bones of it down. Yeah. And then uh, try try your best. Yeah. The worst is when you watch an actor who thinks they did it, they delivered an incredible performance. It had nothing to do with the story, and they were just fucking in their own emotions and just disconnected. Or flowing. Sometimes, sometimes even when you're flowing, great. It's not, it's not. Oh, that's true, bro. Well too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flow <laughs> isn't everything. Not everything. That's the crazy thing. We got 20 seconds, brother. Any any closing thoughts? This Dude, have, have a lovely week. I know this has been therapeutic to get this out. Yeah, I love these. Same. Man. My favorite parts of the week. Um, no. Dude, get on that script. I'm so excited, man. I'm stoked to read it. Have a good nope. one, brother. You too, brother. Peace. Bye.